literally just parked the car. Thought I'd jump in this shopping centre here just to sort my um, my camera out. And I spotted this girl, <laughs> um, what do you call it? Advert on the wall there. I really, really like it. But if you step in front of this sort of the lines where that guy is now, it's pre, pre focus there and get that guy. Um, just like it that she's kind of looking at the camera because she was looking straight at the photographer when he took the picture. Um, but then just having a, a silhouette or something next to just to the just to the left of her. Really like it. I've only literally got out of the car five minutes ago. Really like the way that the texture of the vertical line is going on the right of it. How are we doing? So the idea was to come down to London. Uh, my mate Mark Fernley and Sean Tucker and a few of the other street photographers actually got an event, an exhibition in London today. So I've come down to that, it's the opening night tonight, so I'm excited to see that. Hopefully meet a few of the guys there. Um, so yeah, so when I left Wales this morning, it was absolutely dreadful. So I thought I'd spend the day in London doing a bit of street photography and it'll be nice. It's guaranteed to be better weather in London. So I've got here this morning. Uh, and it's crap, <laughs> it's horrible. So yeah, excuse the, uh, the Osmo footage. I'm not getting the cannon out in this, it's chucking it down. So I've uh, got the Fujifilm X-T3 uh, with the 50mm um, the Fuji lens. Obviously it's about 75, 72 mil equivalent full frame. But this is a weather sealed option. So I couldn't bring my, my X100F because it's not weather sealed and I haven't got the X100V yet. So um, yeah, I've got this. And I thought I'd use this camera and this lens uh, just to be able to pick out a bit of detail because when I went, met up with Mark Fernley a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was now, um, I really enjoyed using this uh, this focal lens just to be able to pick out some details. So I've chucked on this, what was the shot there? I've chucked on this lens now, just to see if the uh, facing the wrong way. Would have been good otherwise. Uh, just to see if I could pick out some details, get something a, a bit more sort of focused, a bit more uh, obvious when you look at the photograph. So yeah, using the 50mm on the Fuji today, obviously taking advantage of the weather sealed capabilities, not going to drench the camera. I don't believe in drenching cameras, so don't watch this thinking, Gareth's out in the rain with his camera, everything's all right. It's not. I don't trust weather sealing on cameras, but they do help. So yeah, we're going to have a wander around London, see what shots we can get. Um, yeah, see you in a minute. <laughs> the newspaper then to the oh might have got it looks good in the background focused on him at f4 but um the guy with the newspaper in the foreground that made the shot right so just got off the train at blackfriars uh tube station and as soon as i got off actually with this lens with the 50 more lens there's so many things that you can <laughs> so there's so many shots just you can pick out because it's just a quirky environment and it's good as well because a lot of people here are smartly dressed as well so yeah I find that with this lens just looking for really really details and in fact a few times I've actually forgotten I've been shooting with the uh, sort of 75 equivalent and um, what sorry no, re no recording oh like that. Oh, you're not allowed to. No. Oh, okay, you know, mate. No worries. The thing why is, on the platforms in particular, yeah, because the trains when they're coming in, they're coming in from the dock. Yeah. And people take flash and so on and so forth, so they don't know whether or not there's going to be a flash on that. Ah, uh, I see. So you can do it. In so here. you can take photographs but no filming. Yeah, but no. You can take photographs with no flash. Yeah, take photographs with no flash. And you can take photographs and you're on the platform. And the, and the driver thinks it's a flash and he hits Oh the no, there's no flash. I know, no. Yeah, no worries, man. Where are you from anyway? From Ireland, yeah? I'm from Irish Republic. Ah. Educated. But, unfortunately, I'm that colour. Yeah. But, but, my dad's Catholic, my mum's a proddy. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was me getting told off for filming. Turns out, it's okay to film and it's okay to photograph, just not with flash. I thought I was going to get stuff. Uh, man, that guy could talk. Really nice guy, Martin, oh, from you? Ireland. <laughs> Oh man, this sucks. It's gone horrendous. The wind's picked up. Yet again, the Welsh weather's followed me. It is abysmal. Wind and rain, absolutely. I don't mind the rain combined with the wind. I really don't like it. It's really horrible. So yeah, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna try and find indoor locations, even though I'm weather sealed. It's just not nice. It's not nice to photograph in because the wind's blowing into the front of the lens. Yeah, it gets some cracking uh, reflections in this sort of weather, but and you get some really, really cool umbrella shots as well. People walking around clutching onto their umbrella. I'm all for street photography in any conditions, and you really can do street photography in any conditions, any weather. But when it's driving wind and rain like this, it really isn't nice. And also it makes it difficult because, it, oh, that <laughs> umbrellas are popping everywhere you look, it's brilliant. Uh, it just means that anywhere you point your camera, you constantly wipe, it, wipe with the front lens because the water just splattering all over, it's horrible. But uh, yeah, don't mind photography in the rain, but when it's coupled with wind like it is today, oh, that's horrible, horrible. So I had to get out of the rain, absolute crap, <laughs> it's horrible. So uh, this is the very famous Blackfriars Bridge. And it's got a wonderful, wonderful uh, London skyline in the background. And I've noticed, I wasn't actually planning on stopping, but I've noticed the nice reflections here, just to the right, you see that? And it's a lovely silhouette of people walking across the top there with their umbrellas as well. So just like that guy standing there, I wanted to get a nice skyline shot. Um, I'm still on the 50 mil, so I haven't really got the option of going very wide, but just like that now. So if I get, if I pre-focus, so I've already pre-exposed, focus on him and get that to come up quite a bit just to get London in the background and the umbrella uh, in the foreground. I really, really like it. I'm at 5.6. I'm not that bothered about the sharpness of the background, uh, but I'd like a bit of depth of field to play with as people move across the sea. Um, nice. So yeah, just in case, I give that a shot. That one might be quite nice, but I think I'm going to do a bit better. I think the, tri the trick is, is to get the camera composed where I want it to be, so focus on, say like one end railings at 5.6 actually can bring the ISO down, I think I'm a bit, a bit hot on the ISO actually, bring the ISO back down. Uh, so look, the ISO now is telling me, that's it, I can go, I can go there, actually I'll bring it back up again, I'm 1600 on the ISO, um, 1600 for that light. So just in case you're waiting now for somebody just to, just to walk in front of there, just pre-focus in that corner, just wait for somebody to walk in front of that background. What a relief, wind's dropped, it's absolutely chucking it down still. I don't really mind the rain, but I just nipped into the Tate to change my lenses over. I've gone back to the, uh, the XF 23mm, which is a 35mm equivalent, but weather sealed still. So I was just finding that with a 50mm, where there wasn't enough light, I was shooting pretty much, I had to have set my ISO about 3200 just to get me any depth of field. It's just not bright enough. Um, yeah, struggling to, struggling to, leave a focal point and it be reliable so yeah nip back into the tape change lenses tempted to stay in the coffee shop <laughs> the wind is absolutely nuts on this part of the river so as people are walking either direction here i'm pre-focusing so i've got the camera about this sort of light focusing on the floor at f8.5 per second um because i know what's important is that depth of field is going to be quite close to them but i want to get an action shot of uh, somebody's umbrella either smashing in their face as <laughs> it breaks um a bit mean i know but oh there's somebody walking towards me the umbrella is going to give it away so yeah that's the idea as they walk towards me yeah, i should get yeah. the odd broken umbrella or something like that It'd be quite funny so yeah he's going to walk up and down this this strip for about five minutes no agenda no no plans i need to be over that side in a couple of hours but i'm all right for a bit so i'm just going to use what I've got. I've got crap weather and I've got really strong wind. So, you know crap weather is going to bring umbrellas, you know wind's going to bring broken umbrellas, so I'm going to use both of them. So yeah, what's important, camera settings is a fascia to speak, because people are walking towards me. Uh, depth of field, because they're going to be quite close, I'm going to pre-focus at two metres. I'm not really bothered about the ISO. I think it's, it's at 3200 at the minute, or 2500 at the minute. This has gone and I missed it. <laughs> I can't see. There's definitely, definitely a shot here. I love these old buildings. Really, really cool old buildings. Um, having the camera portrait 
focused at about 10 meters in the background there. Just want one. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, like the way the light catches that building on the top right. Uh, poor joke, that's really, really nice. But the trick is to wait for one person, really, or with a brightly coloured umbrella. That's really difficult because it's just so busy. But that is a composition I really like. Um, just using this wall here on the right hand side just to sort of frame it a bit better. But it's worth waiting five minutes for, I think. What's important, obviously, is uh, depth of field to a degree. Focusing it near infinity, so it should be okay at 5, f5.6. Uh, 250 per second to freeze the motion as they walk, and then the ISO. I'm literally keeping the ISO quite quite low because obviously there's no white really in the in the scene, other than the top very very top right. So there's uh, no reason for the uh, the histogram to be past the middle. So I'm happy with where the histogram is at the minute. But I just need to wait for one person. Out of nowhere, out of flipping nowhere, it's, the heavens have opened, it's absolutely tipping it down. I've got the cannon out which is not waterproof. Oh man, London today you have been a challenge. Look at this rain. <laughs> oh, out of nowhere this came. Flipping incredible. It is bombing, oh the wind's come back, oh no. This is more like me. This is nice. I found this puddle. So in these buildings, that light, which is disappearing now, was piercing through here. And I'm pretty focused at the back there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a an old-fashioned light in the top right hand corner of the frame, which there is absolutely fantastic. Look how much how well you can see on the Osmo. But that that there, if somebody comes through that beam of light just on the left hand third like that i would be pleased so i might wait here five five or ten minutes i'm on the way to the exhibition now so it really got long i'm going to give it five or ten minutes or some or five minutes probably for somebody to go through just to come go left go oh i don't go left go left go left oh, i can't get her to where i want she's not in the light she didn't go in the light Well, you can see it because it's not let me expose that area but the crash down there that's some pools of the light catching it it's crashed right down to this puddle it reflects cracking so just gonna wait find a good reflection it's all that so let's see find a good reflection focus on some pools it should be on f8 i must have knocked that f8 I think I might find a better reflection as well. Because I might be a bit far away from some pools. Just make that screen down so you can see. A bit better, a closer. Focus on some pools. I need somebody to walk into the scene though. Good reflection though. Good reflection. So we could lift the, uh, there we go. just try and keep the camera as low to the floor as possible, pre focus on some, on some pulls. It should give me a nice sharp image from the back, but I don't know whether to go and have some pulls on the left like that, or on the right. It depends where somebody's coming from, I guess. Keep an eye on this anyway, worth, worth hanging around for, I think. I need somebody in the, in the contrasty bit there, in the, in the white area, otherwise you won't see them. Let's give it a minute. Come on, last shot of the day. Last shot of the day. Give me this one. Give me this one. Is it going to work? I need one person there, don't I? Bike. Bike, bike, bike. Which way's it going? Three, two, one. Oh. 
Let's hope for the bike at 11 frames a second. Let's hope I got one, a good one of that bike. <laughs> What a fantastic day. Do you know what, despite the wind and rain, it was absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Amazing challenge photographing in those conditions in London. Um, you can do street photography in any conditions, it's just proving it, just proving it. Uh, but yeah, it was awesome, really, really good. Um, but the exhibition, absolutely blown away to meet so many uh, super talented street photographers. Some of them have been uh, following, following on YouTube and Instagram for such a long time. So it was really, really good to see them and meet them for the first time. Um, Oh yeah, picked up this zine as well. They're selling these zines, which are like a really, really beautifully presented books. Um, so yeah, grab one of these as well. I actually managed to get my, my, mine signed as well. So yeah, pleased with that. <laughs> um, incredible uh, of them to feature one of my videos, uh, interviewing Mark Fernley, he was, of course, he was one of the exhibitors there. So Mark Fernley, um, and I did a video a couple, of, a couple of months ago now. So um, yeah, I interviewed Mark Fernley and they featured that in the exhibition as well. So I was really, really honored for them to do that. Didn't know that was gonna happen. And Mark told me when I got there, I thought he was winding me up. But yeah, that was super cool to see uh, my, uh, um, my interview on the big screen there amongst, the, amongst those giants. <laughs> but yeah, really, really awesome. I'll put all the details uh, for the Three, three Street Gallery, um, which is the organizers for that event in the, in the description below. So if you're interested and you're in London, it's running to the 1st of March. So do check that out. I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. So anyway, um, really, really enjoyed uh, street photography in London. I thought I'd fail because the weather was gonna be, I thought it was gonna fail because the weather was so bad, but Literally the very last minute, five minutes before I got to the exhibition, I think I got my favourite image of certainly the year, but one of my favourite images, possibly my favourite street image of all time. So yeah, thrilled with how the day went. Uh, let's jump over and have a look at the images. Then, so this first image, I just I went into the into the shop just to get out of the rain, um, just to get my camera ready, make sure everything was up and ready to go, and spotted this potential. Now the idea of it, I kind of messed up because I wanted more of these bars on the right hand side. Um, so I didn't quite get it right, but the idea was there. It was just what a warm-up shot, I suppose. The first, as soon as I start taking photographs on on, on a street walk, I'm normally really sort of struggling. <laughs> I normally don't see anything straight away, so it takes me a few minutes to see it, or a few hours on some occasions. Um, but yeah, this uh, this was a shot I seen I, I seen straight away, and I thought it would work. I do like the silhouette in front of it, but I, I, the idea was to have more of these bars on the right hand side. Um, and less of the space here, so I should have moved back. But that 50mm lens just enabled me to pick out the details that I liked, so I was really, really pleased with that. Um, yeah, nice. Um, thrill, but again, 50mm lens helped me find this. I say 50mm is about 70, 70 something on the on a full frame. So it's almost a portrait lens, but it's actually really good for street photography because you can just you can just put, pick out details like this. Uh, again, the Osmo wasn't wasn't filming quick enough when I uh, when when I seen this. So you can very very, very briefly see the shot in in the Osmo, but um, in the footage. But uh, yeah, I really really like that guy staring straight through the frame there and the guy reading the magazine. So yeah, really really nice. Again, the 50mm is good because it keeps all your vertical lines vertical when you need them. So yeah, pleased with that. I quite like that photograph. Um, this is a shot that I wanted because it kind of summed up the day, a windy, rainy, uh, very windy and rainy day in London. So it, the idea was there. Um, I had to have the camera full stretch to try and get rid of the railings down here. So I had my arms right up in the air. So it, it, it's a, it was a difficult shot to take. I thought I did better than that though. I think I probably either should have gone closer to the scene, um, even if it meant standing in the rain. Um, but yeah, I do like the, the, the faded background there. It, it, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice image. I think the idea is there, but you know, it, I thought it was going to come out a bit better, but I do, I do like the image. I think it summed up the day, almost, apart from the wind. This summed up the day. This um, umbrella's popping left, right and centre. Um, 
yeah, really, really good. I knew that because of the conditions, this was something I was going to have to look for. And to be honest, I find it hilarious when people's umbrellas just go nuts like this and they're clutching onto them in wind and rain. So I'd rather, I hate umbrellas anyway, so I'd rather be with that one and just embrace it. <laughs> but it was funny to see. So yeah, like this shot, I was slightly more than two, two meters away from this guy and I'd focused at two meters. So at F8, I'm really, really glad he came out sharp. Okay, these girls, I really like this photograph, but I messed up because I was too close to them. I thought with my 35 mil equivalent, I would have got all three of them in. I thought I was further back than I was, and every single one of them, I chopped the young lady off the back. So yeah, a bit frustrated. Um, would have been nice in colour as well, because she had a red, red umbrella, but the lady in the background there had loads of, um, or is she holding it? Something's brightly coloured there anyway, so that ruined the, the colour version of the image. But yeah, it tells the story well. It was good, good fun. This one made me laugh. I was gutted that I didn't get the photograph when her umbrella popped. Uh, but yeah, very funny having her, her hat blowing down over her eyes so she couldn't see and stuff. Yeah, just, just summed up the day. Really, really like it. Nice, simple shot. I was really relieved to get out of the wind and rain. So when I when I seen this shot, I was um, I, I was really pleased to see the composition because it looks like it's been in a film set or something like that. It looks really, really cool. Uh, path leading up to where the subject is. Um, bit of a fluke that this is glowing orange here. I don't remember it glowing orange. I remember the window being there, but I don't remember it glowing orange. But that balance is in the top right third near, near enough. Yeah, it is in the top right third, yeah. Um, and then obviously the path going up with the person stood there. So it took me a while to get this shot because obviously it was quite a busy day, even considering the rain. Um, the only thing, I, I really love, I love the way the shine, the light catches the shiny paint there. That looks fantastic. I love the detail in it. I wish I'd gone slightly to the right though, just to get rid of that line in that different uh, paintwork there. So I wish I'd gone to the right and got rid of that. But otherwise, I really like that shot. That's how I should have been. That line disappears on the next shot. So I do like this photograph. I wish he wasn't carrying them bags, but I like the way that this line has gone through there and sort of isolated the scene better. So yeah, pleased with that photograph. Um, I don't know, I don't remember moving forward, but I must have done because that, that window's disappeared. So maybe, yeah, I must have I've moved forward quite a bit because I was on the 35 mil equivalent at this point. So yeah. Um, I did well actually to get the vertical lines vertical. I had to have the camera again, like up in the air, about six foot, no seven foot, just to get just to keep the, the the walls vertical. But yeah, looks like something out of a film. So I really like this like this area, and you've got the slight reflection of the umbrella and the and the water there as well. So yeah, the brickwork almost points down to the lady as well, which is quite quite fluky. This shot I didn't think I was going to get because when I was filming, the lady didn't walk into the into the lighter part. But before, when I was getting the composition and having a look, see if it was going to work, uh, this guy walked past and I did a test shot. And I didn't think the camera was in the right place. I thought I cropped off this lamp. Um, I don't. I don't think I was. I, I don't know. It doesn't balance the reflection. Maybe I should have been back further and, and, and perhaps a bit lower as well, but I don't want to dump my camera in the water. So yeah, I do like the idea of the shot. And obviously it's crucial that he's in front of that lighter area. So it, so the lighter area shows his his, um, his silhouette better. It almost works. The bus in the background annoys me a little bit, but yeah, you know, I've slightly cropped off the top of that building as well. But yeah, the colours are nice. Considering 30 seconds before this, it was absolutely bombing it down with wind and rain. You never think you'd never think it because of the blue sky and stuff. But love the colours. Love this old lamp here. So yeah, potential for a good shot there. I think definitely my shot of the day. Absolutely loved this. Um, I remember seeing the guy step out into the th into the path when I thought, oh, good grief, walk forward, walk forward, and he did. And I was. Again, the Osmo didn't film though. I don't know where, why it didn't film. Um, I was gutted it didn't film, but yeah, really thrilled with this. Um, I just, I think I should have, maybe I could have got the camera closer to the water, I don't know, but it's definitely a shot I'm really proud of. And in my street photography journey, this is probably one of the few shots that I, say, I think I would, I'd happily print. Um, it's my street photography, I find difficult to find an image that I think works in a print. Um, but this one, I really, really, I really do like. I got I actually got two. I'll show you both of them. I've oh, actually got about ten of this guy in different positions because I was shooting on a burst. But I like the I like his posture. I like the way he looks like he's walking towards um, some pools there. I think it's fantastic. Uh, the right, the one on the right actually shows a better reflection um, of him there. So on the left one, he blocks off some pools a bit like that. But I don't know. I think his shape is a lot better on the left one. I don't know. I like them both. I'm really, really pleased. Um, definitely made, I mean, this was two minutes before I went to the My London exhibition. So this, I was on the way to the exhibition. This is complete fluke that I found this. It was complete fluke that it stopped raining. So yeah, really, really pleased with this shot. 
uh, either of these. I say I've got a load of them, so yeah, mega, mega pleased with that. Perfect. Um, this I thought was going to be the shot of the day. I got a load of these, the guy on the bike. Really like it. Didn't get the isolation around the bike that I, I thought I was going to get. I thought the light would bounce off there a little bit better and I'd get a better shape, but it's just a bit too dark. But yeah, it's a cool shot. Got the um, support on the left third, so a bit different. Um, but yeah, the reflection's nice and everything. The idea is there. I think what's important sometimes with street photography is actually seeing the scene and actually getting the image, even if it's not perfect. It's just the ability to see it. And I think I'm really pleased that I, that I managed to see this shot, managed to capture this shot. Um, yeah, I think it definitely shows development and it shows that I'm, I'm thinking of different shots as opposed to the same one. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. This I'm really annoyed about because this was taken a few minutes either before or after those last two uh, photographs. And again, the Osmo didn't record. I don't know why. I've seen this amazing light just after the wind and rain stopped. I've um, seen this amazing reflection on the path and I've noticed a few people coming out of this building really smartly dressed. They were normally getting in a car. Just I'll show you what it's like upside down, the other way around. So they were coming from the right and, and crossing over and getting in cars and taxis here. Um, and this guy came out and just started walking away. Um, or was he walking towards me? He started. Getting, he got out and started walking either way, either either forwards or backwards. And I wasn't expecting it, but when it happened, I was I was I was absolutely delighted because I've been. I mean, this is a Mark Fernley influence for me. So this is the sort of thing that I've picked up from seeing other photographers on Instagram. Um, and I really, really, I knew that if I did get a nice silhouette there, a nice shape in that gap there, it would be a really, really nice upside down reflection, whatever shot you want to call it. But yeah thrill with that shot as well so yeah good to the osmo didn't catch that but anyway um yeah hope you enjoyed the video i'm really really pleased with how it turned out really relieved <laughs> considering the wind and rain again it was amazing to get to the exhibition so do check out the exhibition it's until the first of march uh, wonderful um to meet those guys um Thanks to all the guy, all you guys that have been using the hashtag street underscore gat on your Instagram images as well. It's really, really overwhelming. You've got an amazing community building there. I know it's quite a lot of people commenting underneath each other's pictures now. So it's almost like people are networking as well. So that's amazing to see. I'm thrilled with that. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll fe feature some of the images from the street underscore gat at the end of the video. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know which is your favorite image and uh, I'll see you again soon. I've got a few more street photography videos coming out very soon. So I look forward to sharing them with you. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Thanks again. Take care.